New reaction today to a proposed ban on big cups of sugary drinks as critics question whether the food police have finally gone too far. New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg has called to ban the sale of sugary drinks over 16 ounces in size. This is well over. And reaction from both sides of this argument has not stopped. And New York is not the only place the food police are cracking down. We put together a focus panel on this issue. They join me now on set. So we've got folks from all stripes here, who some of whom are actually into nutrition and health and so on and have some very strong opinions on this. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg says he needs to help us save us from ourselves. And we obesity is an epidemic. He's sick and tired of paying for it. The New York City taxpayers paying for it. And he wants it to stop. Sarah Tolan, you're a fix fitness expert. What say you? I think it's a great idea. Someone has to sound the alarm over that. I mean, it's costing America millions of dollars. It would be billions of dollars in health care. Plus, um, it, it might be a little bit better if he uh, regulates, asks the manufacturers to regulate how much sugar he, they put in their drinks mm -hmm. and so other change foods. the product. Yeah, rather than leaving it to consumers, because studies have shown when consumers have a choice for something healthier, or when they keep, are kept from something that is not so good for them, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, it is a little bit of a police state, but um, it is we need it now. How, how about it? We've got an uh, obesity epidemic in this country. Our kids are getting fatter. We're getting fatter. People are dying younger, and we don't seem to care. So why shouldn't we have the state save us? Basil Smichel. Yeah, I think it's actually a really good idea, but the question is, does the government intervention, is there a direct line to the outcome that's desired? Because although I think this is a good idea, the question is, could we have done this with uh, by incentivizing restaurants to cut down on the amount that they put in the glasses? Um, does it obviate the need for government intervention at that point? And on the other hand, um, you know, if we're talking about this in, 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 in the context of obesity, are we cutting down on the other stuff that kids are eating, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, They're fried trying. food, so on and so They're forth? They're trying. We talked about this actually on the program earlier. I mean, some places have banned trans fats now. School lunches are much more regulated than they were when we were growing up. And yet still, Melissa Gerstein, we're getting fatter and fatter, and it's because of the evil things that are in cups like this. No, it's not, actually. What it's, is it it's, because it's of? It's about moderation. And as a mother of three little ones, I'm going to tell you that it starts in the home. And we have to be responsible as Americans. And it's not the government's job to tell me what to feed my children and how much I can have. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I don't, I've never even drinking, drinking something of, of that magnitude. But I mean, people are doing it. Well, people, people are doing need it. to stop doing it and know what's right from wrong and take responsibility for themselves. But they don't. Mayor Bloomberg says they don't. The, if you like this, you're a dumb dumb. Well, Megan, and Mayor Bloomberg help? is going to save you from yourself, you dumb dumbs out there who happen to like these big things. I mean, you tell me, Mark Furnish. How will it help? You'll just buy more smaller ones, first of no, all. No, you won't. You're too lazy. Nah, you'll buy more smaller ones. And if you really want to stop the problem, you'll slap a big old tax on it like you do with cigarettes. That, uh -huh. may, that, may, that may deter some people from using it. And it also may help defray the costs for those who don't stop The using studies it. have proven that a tax on products like this does deter <clears throat> people from buying it. Uh, but is that really the answer? Tax us more? I mean, you tell me, uh, Marcy Clark, why is it Mayor Bloomberg's business if I want to drink myself silly with a sugary soda? Because we can't afford it. He's a finance guy. This is a city I have of health finance insurance. People. He doesn't pay for my ailments. But he pays for a lot. The government pays for a lot of people's health insurance. And we can't afford the health effects of a 32 ounce big gulp that someone might have every day. But only someone, right? Okay, now I am a relatively thin person. Why can't I have it? Why does Mayor Bloomberg say I can't have it? In the 1950s, an average drink size, if you went to a diner and got a cup of orange juice, it was four to six ounces. But perception and what's available to the consumer, it changes our choices. Mm -hmm. And now we have 32 ounces mm -hmm. is presented as just the large regular serving size. Mm -hmm. And we're getting really fat. People have supersized everything. You ever order room service now in a hotel? Yeah. And not, you don't get the little chicken that's like a five ounce. Or it's <laughs> like you get 10 ounces, you get two breasts, and people think they're supposed to clear their no, plates nobody, because people are starving in Africa. Nobody's anybody to buy the biggest thing on the menu. Close your mouth, exercise some self-restraint, and you won't gain 1,000 pounds. But they're simple. not doing it. That's the problem. Zerlina Maxwell, you tell me, because people are not doing it. They, that message has been right. given. You know, eat less, drink less. This is bad for you. They're not listening, so do we need Mayor Bloomberg. Yes, we do. I mean, I think in America, we always think about bigger is better. This is one of those cases where bigger is not better. You do, should not double your caloric intake for your lunch meal with your Coke. You don't need 30 ounces of soda. And so 
Just don't need provide is such it a to relative people. term. I mean, when you have that big popcorn in the movie theater, you need something. And now they get, put the calories very in there. And now they put the calories next to that big popcorn. It's of over 2,000 calories, which is a full day's worth of calories. And we're, we're struggling with the obesity epidemic. And you know, one of the reasons is because we drink too much soda. Your doctors, the first thing they're going to tell you in terms of weight loss is sugar soda. Out, the diet soda is not bad. Drinks. Natalia Rose, let me ask you because you're a nutritionist, you are in favor of this ban. But do you see any hypocrisy here by the mayor who today? is celebrating National yeah, Donut, Donut Day. Day as he tells us we can't have our soda. That was Mayor. a stun me. No, I, right? I'm, I'm there. I'm with you. Um, I think what we need to understand is that the sodas don't just cause obesity. They cause deterioration of our bones and organs. We are cratering as human beings. Our, the very substance that makes up our bodies is deteriorating because of these substances. But ice so, cream's bad for our saturated fat. It is. I mean, how, where does the banning stop? Yeah, this is the first step. It's a small step. But goodness, we need Need, we need to take responsibility, as, as many people have said in this, in this panel, and we need to start raising alarm bells around these things because people aren't paying attention to what Why? they're putting inside look their bodies. At, look at, look at, look at, look at butter, right? Butter's not good for you, right? But Julia Child put so much butter in everything, and but, she lived to be in her mid-90s. But sugar so, so did Norma Dean. Where Butter's she? not a carcinogen. Polydine. Now she's got diabetes. 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 Where is she? Yeah, but what I'm saying is there's an example everywhere. My own Nana, 97 years old, almost, has never given a thought to nutrition in her life. She always says, my sister Lily drank herself to death, my sister uh, Helen <laughs> smoked herself to death, and I'm going to eat myself to death, she yeah, says. Yeah, right. But they she never gives a thought of this, but she's going to be 97 in but October. There's so yeah. much more added sugars in foods these days than there were 50 years ago. It's unbelievable. And soda is the number one source of added sugar in our diet. It's not the natural sugars that you find in, you know, fruit and milk and other foods. It's added sugars. And soda is a big culprit, or the number one culprit. Mm -hmm. And back to what you were saying about you're thin, you don't have to worry about it. I'm thin too. I didn't put it quite that way. Well, you know, just for the record, but, but for people who are thin, that, that soda is not a soda is a problem because it also can raise your LDL, your bad cholesterol levels, your bad blood fat levels. But in moderation, well, David Selig, you tell me, in moderation, shouldn't Americans be able to make choices for themselves? I mean, even course, thin, healthy people yes. can take a, an unhealthy choice, can have lots of pizza or lots of real fat, full fat ice cream. Absolutely. And the fact of the matter is, uh, Mayor Bloomberg is the enemy of liberty. And anyone who wants to tell you or anyone else what you can eat or drink is really interfering with your simple pleasures. It's as if he's no longer content to be the mayor. He would rather be a Rothschild or an emperor mm. or some individual of that stripe. And we're being reduced to serfs of some sort. The other question is, you know, as yeah. I mentioned a moment ago, where does it stop? All right, if you're, if you're going to accept it, because you say it's a, it's a first step, how many steps are we going to take? Because John Stewart was making this point last night. Look around New York City right now. Here's in part how he made the point. Then I can go from there right over to Hooters for a quick basket of chicken wings, battered, deep fried, and tossed in hot sauce and melted butter, served with a bowl of cheese. <laughs> Top it all off with a little bit of a frozen hot chocolate from Serendipities. All of this is legal in New York City. <laughs> Until God forbid I want to wash it down with a little something as pure and refreshing as Mountain Dew. <laughs> Dr. Jason Kelton, you actually wrote the book on naked calories. What do you think? Well, Does he I have think, a point? I think we have to ask the, ourselves the question, who will watch the watchers themselves? You know, I don't think anybody's more passionate than I am about helping to fix the obesity epidemics, but I don't think we can regulate our way out of our obesity problem here in America. We cannot take away the fundamental rights of an individual, which is what America was founded on. Mm -hmm. If we start to take away our ability to make choices as to what size soda we're having, maybe next time it's what size steak I can have. Yeah, maybe right. next time it's, you know, can I raise my child as a vegan or a vegetarian or paleo? You know, we do not need government in there telling us how we should handle our nutrition. But, I mean, what's next? They're, they're going to serve all our plates no, in restaurants no, on like a little salad but, plates? Coffee, but, red but, meat, but listen, if governments, if governments are taking right. money out of schools and not allowing 
kids to become part of phys ed programs and taking athletics out of school, then government's got to do something to, to, no, to stop the obesity problem. We ask they they have to do it on, on one side. Or we another. ask government to regulate so there's no arsenic in our chicken and there's no unhealthy right. toxins. And so we have, there's, no, there's not an overwhelming amount of pesticides in certain foods. We already asked government to do that. You can look at sugar as toxic. And actually, a recent paper in the uh, Journal of Nature, researchers proposed that sugar be re re regulated like a toxic substance, wow. like alcohol or tobacco. It's what are we going to be able to enjoy? I mean, you know, pretty soon it's going to be like something. just the salad with no dressing. Who really? I'd rather be but heavy. He's, he's oh, not saying you can't have soda. He's just saying you can't have 30 ounces at one time. And if you want, but just get about, two. What about that? No one's going to do that. I mean, I think he's hassling us. He's hassling us. He's hassling us. He wants good. to leave the movie three times so they can fill up their soda. Here's my question to you, and then I got to go. Isn't it? They're already regulating, so you have to put the calories on the front of the product. Isn't that the answer? Give the people the truth. Give them the information so they know. Go ahead and drink it if you want, but this They're is what addicted. you're getting. They're if you addicted. Wanna, right. If you want to drink yourself to death, it's your business. You're not blowing smoke in my face. Go ahead and drink yourself to like death. Like my great aunt Helen. Just, just leave me out. <laughs> so we she control, didn't really, no, no. We control addictive substances in this country. A lot of addictive substances. Pizza? We control them. And soda has tons of sodium as well as sugar. So you drink it, you get thirstier, and you need more and more and Pretzels more. Have a ton of sodium. Maybe Mayor Bloomberg <laughs> should cut, crack down on that next. I mean, the, the question is, where does it end? Great discussion. You guys did great. Thank you all so much. Wasn't that interesting? And we're taking your thoughts on it right now. Already getting some. This one's from Susan in Raleigh, North Carolina, who writes, Bloomberg wants to ban large Cokes. Down here, we're still trying to figure out how to deep fry them. <laughs> uh, we're taking your thoughts right now. Follow me on Twitter at Megan Kelly, and we will continue the conversation.